Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 11th of September. Yeah. Indian Prime Minister launches vaccination scheme for livestock. Activists in Geneva highlight rights violations by Pakistan in Balochistan. And Harvest Festival of Onam celebrated with pomp and gaiety in South India. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the National Animal Disease Control Program in Northern Mathura City on Wednesday. He also asked people to shun single-use plastic and said the wanton use of plastic poses a hazard to the environment. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated host of programs including the National Animal Disease Control Program or NADCP on Wednesday in Northern Mathura City. With 100% funding from the central government till 2024, the NADCP program aims at vaccinating over 500 million livestock against foot and mouth disease. The program has targeted vaccinating 36 million female bovine calves annually in its fight against brucellosis disease. Asking people to shun single-use plastic, Prime Minister Modi said the wanton use of plastic posed a hazard to the environment and had led to livestock and fish being killed. Now we have single-use plastic, or such plastic, which we have to use one time and use it. उससे छुटकारा पाना ही होगा हमें ये कोशिश करनी है कि इस वर्ष 2 अक्टूबर तक अपने घरों को अपने दफ्तरों को अपने कार्यक्षेत्रों को सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक से मुक्त करें Prime Minister Modi earlier this week, while addressing the Conference of Parties to United Nations Convention to combat desertification, also spoke of India's resolve to end single-use plastic and urged other nations to embrace the cause as well. The government has pledged to eliminate single-use plastic by the year 2022. In its strong rebuttal to Pakistan's allegations on Kashmir issue at the United Nations, India emphatically asserted on Tuesday that Jammu and Kashmir was an internal matter and called out Pakistani delegation for giving a running commentary with offensive rhetoric of false allegations and concocted charges against New Delhi. Rebuting Pakistan's claims at the United Nations Human Rights Council or UNHRC, India on Tuesday reiterated that the revocation of Jammu and Kashmir's special status is its internal matter. Describing Pakistan as the epicenter of global terrorism, India called out the Pakistani delegation for giving a running commentary with offensive rhetoric of false allegations and concocted charges against New Delhi. Speaking at the 42nd session of the UNHRC in Geneva, India's Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs Vijay Thakur Singh said that Jammu Despite and Kashmir Civil Administration was ensuring Jammu basic and services and essential supplies and restrictions were being eased. One delegation here has given a running commentary with offensive rhetoric of false allegations and concocted charges against my country. The world is aware that this fabricated narrative comes from the epicenter of global terrorism, where ringleaders are sheltered for years. This country conducts cross-border terrorism as a form of alternate diplomacy. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Human Shah Mahmood Qureshi earlier at the session wrecked up the Kashmir issue, asking the rights body not People to remain indifferent to the situation. He also demanded an international investigation into the situation. 
Tensions between India and Pakistan escalated ever since India revoked Jammu and Kashmir's special status under Article 370 last month and bifurcated it into two union territories. Moving on, Baloch political and human rights activist still ambassador on Pakistan for atrocities against the Baloch people, calling its outcry over the Kashmir issue as hypocrisy. They held a briefing on the humanitarian crisis in Balochistan on the sidelines of the UNHRC session in Geneva on Tuesday. Baloch political activists and human rights defenders on Tuesday ambassador on Pakistan for atrocities against Baloch people at a time when it is crying foul over Kashmir at the 42nd session of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva. The Baloch Human Rights Council organized a briefing on the humanitarian crisis in Balochistan at a special tent in front of the UN office in Geneva. The activists stated that Pakistani army continues to carry out operations in Balochistan that have led to an increase in the number of enforced disappearances across the region. So, the foreign minister, Shamut Qureshi, gave a speech. Absolutely, so, Balochistan ke awale, wo Balochistan ka जो किस्सा है वहां पर जो ज्यादाति हैं वहां पर जो लोग मर रहे हैं जो लोग सालों साल गायब हैं तो उसके हवाले से तो वो नहीं बोलेगा इसलिए हम यहां पर हैं इसलिए हम दुनिया को उसके जो झूठ है वहां पर उसको साबित करने के लिए हम यहां पहुंचे हैं पाकिस्तान इज अ रोग स्टेट अनटिल इट सीजेस इट्स ह्यूमन राइट्स वायलेशंस एंड इट्स कोलूजन विद टेररिज्म बाय क्रैकिंग डाउन ऑन फंडामेंटलिस्ट्स एंड एक्सट्रीमिस्ट्स then the international community should institute economic sanctions and break diplomatic relations with Pakistan. Baloch activists have long raised the issues of ongoing abductions, enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings by Pakistani security forces, which they claim are used as tactics to muzzle dissenting voices in Balochistan. They have been highlighting the issue worldwide for the past several years to seek help from the international community and human rights organizations. U.S. President Donald Trump has announced he has fired National Security Advisor John Bolton, citing disagreements on a number of foreign policies, including on Afghanistan. Bolton, who gave his resignation on Tuesday, was at loggerheads with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo over the U.S. negotiations with the Taliban. U.S. President Donald Trump has announced he has fired his hardline national security adviser John Bolton over strong disagreements on a number of foreign policies, including on Afghanistan. Trump on Tuesday tweeted that he had told Bolton that his services were no longer needed at the White House and said Bolton has submitted his resignation. President Trump added he strongly disagrees with many of Bolton's suggestions, as did others in the administration. Bolton's ouster comes at a time when he had clashed with many members of the administration, notably Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. He was at loggerheads with Pompeo over the U.S. negotiations with the Taliban to withdraw American troops from Afghanistan, the U.S. media reported. Months of U.S. negotiations with the Taliban have collapsed after Trump abruptly announced on Saturday that he was cancelling talks after Taliban admitted to the recent Kabul attack that killed 12 people, including a U.S. soldier. The talks were aimed at securing a peace deal to end nearly 20 years of war. And he's from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe has urged people's support to abolish the executive presidency from the country. Vikramasinghe said people's mandate is needed to form a strong government with a majority of power in order to provide them a political solution for their problems. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe has urged people's support to abolish the executive presidency in the country. Vikramasinghe on Tuesday said, people's mandate is needed to form a strong government with the majority of power in order to provide them a political solution against the executive presidency and the ethnic problems local media reported. The Premier further added that although the promises he made earlier during 2014 and 2015 elections have already been fulfilled by the current administration, his United National Front government did not have the majority to abolish the executive presidency. 
The remarks by the Premier comes when the island nation is set to hold its presidential election between November and December. President in Sri Lanka is both the head of the state and head of the government. Since 1978, most prime minister have served as mayor deputies of the executive presidency, while at times served as the de facto head of government. Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby on Tuesday visited the Jallianwala Bag, the site of British colonial era massacre, and said it was a deeply humbling experience and provoked feelings of profound shame. The Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby on Tuesday visited the Jallianwala Bag memorial in Amritsar city of India's northern Punjab province and apologized for the massacre by British forces 100 years ago. On April 13, 1919, some 50 British Indian Army soldiers shot dead hundreds of unarmed civilians who were taking part in a peaceful protest at the Jallianwala Bag against oppressive laws. Welby while paying tributes prostrated himself at the memorial and said he felt a deep sense of grief humility and profound shame having visited the site he said as a religious leader he mourns the tragedy the principal leader of the church of england welby later also visited harmandir sahib the holiest of sikh shrines popularly known as the golden temple He was received by the officials of the shrine management body and honored with a robe of honor and a model of the golden temple. My appreciation of the hospitality and welcome of this place and its example of generosity and openness to people of all faiths and all, all sorts and degrees of people from every point on earth. The archbishop in his last leg of a 10-day tour also visited a church in Amritsar where he joined the church members and the devotees in singing hymns his india visit came after his trip to sri lanka where he visited one of the churches bombed during the easter sunday attacks people in india southern kerala province celebrated the annual harvest festival of onam on wednesday onam celebrates the homecoming of mythical king mahabali and is observed with numerous festivities People in India's southern Kerala province on Wednesday celebrated the harvest festival of Onam with fervor and gaiety. Markets in the capital Thiruvananthapuram city were seen buzzing as residents prior to the celebrations bought new clothes and home decors for the occasion. Those who celebrate the harvest festival bathe, offer prayers, participate in dances and draw floral decorations outside their homes. People also participate in fun activities like beating drums and swinging on the occasion. Uh, throughout this uh, week, it's Onam for us. We are uh, friends are uh, coming for, uh, from leave, and we are uh, sparing uh, time with them. And we don't have uh, our assignments and uh, other pressures from our colleges. So we are very happy. On the Thiru Onam day, we wake up. We Uh, designed the pukalam, which is the floral decoration that we do in the in front of our homes. Uh, then we visit all the nearby temples. This is the ritual that we follow. One of the major highlights of the festival is the traditional grand fest called Onam Sadhya, that consists of a variety of local dishes such as rice, sambar, and rasam. Sadhya, made specially on Onam, is served on banana leaves on the occasion. The festival traditionally celebrates the homecoming of mythical king Mahabali who is believed to come from the nether world to check on his citizens. Well that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again. Indian Prime Minister launches vaccination scheme for livestock. Activists in Geneva highlight rights violation by Pakistan in Balochistan. And Harvest Festival of Onam celebrated with pomp and gaiety in South India. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. It's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.